I wonder who Ginger Squirrel would team up in a Beast Alliance. Okay, everyone, Ginger has three choices. A Ritz cheese sandwich with Snarl Saber, delicious Cheez-Its with Skull Cruncher, or the treasured Frosted Strawberry. Which beast will Ginger choose? So many delicious choices. I mean, so many armored beasts to pair with. I think she's going for the Cheez-It. She went for the Cheez-It, everyone. Ginger has chosen Skull Cruncher. Hang on, hang on. No, she found the frosted strawberry. She has now chose Silver Fang. <coughs> wait, wait. Still eyeing that cheese it. I think she has chosen Skull Cruncher. That is her warrior. And she's left the screen. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's drop a wolf on her head. Ow. On the table today at Squirrel Stampede, we are beginning the hunt of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, and we start with the Beast Alliances of Optimus Primal, Bumblebee, and RC teaming up with Skull Cruncher, Snarl Saber, and Silver Fang. What fun! So, three very interesting combo teams of Transformers. Will they be purely gimmick, or will they turn out to be lots of battle fun? Squirrel Stampede! Of course, we start with Transformers Beast Alliance Optimus Primal versus Skull Cruncher combo. Is it versus? No, it's more of a combo pack. Now, we briefly already touched on this one during the Leo Prime review. That's, That's me. me! And I was recalling way back in the early days of Beast Wars, there was a Primal and Alligator combo pack. And thank you, Squirreliber Merlin132, back at the start of Beast Wars when they were still figuring things out, there was a two pack of a bat version of Optimus Primal and an Alligator Megatron. So I know I wasn't dreaming on that one. So the Beast Alliance figures for Rise of the Beasts featured two pack Transformers. I think they ran about approximately 20? Was it 20? Things are getting so high. I found these over at Target. Target so far seems to be dropping the first waves of Beast figures. Seven steps for Optimus Primal, which is pretty handy. One of the reasons Primal was always one of the best. Ultimate quick, fast transformation. Skull Cruncher here looks to feature just a Beast and then armor up for Primal. And just to be safe, of course, I've invited our Squirrel Stampede Alligator Control Experts, Steve Irwin and Croc Master. I'll take care of that Croc if he gives you any trouble. <laughs> so yes, danger, danger, danger. All right, these guys shouldn't be too hard to unbox. They're basically just strapped in. Grab a pair of scissors and start cutting. I've got the beasts snipped out, but where are the instructions? They must be deep inside this box. Hang on. Okay, flip down the front panel, and there they are. At the moment now, I'm pretty unspoiled for seeing any of the items from Rise of the Beasts, yet this is the first things that I've actually seen on shelf. I've kind of seen a few of the squeak peeks of the Studio Series stuff, but not exactly. So I'm really curious where this is going to fall within the line of everything released. This scale of figures runs around about 5 inches in height, or at least what Primal is going to run into. Uh oh, watch out, Skull Cruncher's mad. Whew, we've got him contained, it's okay, it's okay. Glad Steve Irwin is still working in toy form. So Optimus Primal here in robot mode mostly, I believe. We've got his classic style Optimus Prime robot head. Some mechanics coming out from his beastly body. Painted pretty well, I got some blue, some red, and some sort of brownish tone coming from his back fur. And I think he's going to be articulated pretty well for a basic figure. We've got shoulder mobility to rotate around a ball joint. Pretty simple. Nothing in those elbows or wrists. Uh, nothing there in the waist to rotate. There's some hips on ball joints and some knees and even some toes to move. And so he's got just basic movement, which is fine in a style of figure of this. You can give them a little more rough and tumble play. Skull Cruncher will have articulation at those shoulder points to move and on the hip points of those back legs. You can kind of see already it's going to just fit right over Optimus Primal there. So pretty basic there. I was a little bummed I did not get opening and closing jaws. Uh, you get that though. Rockmaster has a little bit of a squeamish stomach. 
So now we just have to place back this headpiece. So no opening and closing jaw, but it will probably be used as a shield or something. So let's figure out some transformation with Primal here. Instructions included, thankfully. Black and white with yellow highlights to tell you kind of what you're doing. So stage one with Prime, we're gonna flip down this front chest and we're gonna rotate around his robot head body and then flip it around with his gorilla body. So, so easy for play. Four will lift out his front arms. Five will sit him down. Six will bend in those knees and seven will kind of hinge up his ankles. And there, my friends, is the quickest transformation I've seen in quite a while. Very, very satisfying when it's quick. And again, you can see kind of the brownish tone on the back there. They've painted a little bit of color back there, which is nice. The face on these beasts, though, still a little robotic looking, not as much hidden as an animal form. They are certainly giant in the trailer, that's for sure. Very cool looking primal. So I think we need to get back into robot mode to do all that Skull Cruncher stuff. Let's maximize Optimus Primal. Okay, so what do we do with the Skull Cruncher part? So you want to get Prime nice and straight. Shoulders straight down, everything nice and standing. That way things should fit down on top pretty well. Then we're gonna waddle over Skull Cruncher and we're gonna give him a power jump and onto Prime's head. It may look a little silly at first, but there's actually some poles on top of Primal's shoulders and the pegs on Skull Cruncher just fit nicely snugly down. They're tightly already bonded. And now they just have to learn how to dance together. Okay, so now what's going on here? We need to rotate up all of Skull Cruncher's legs. Then for step three, Skull Cruncher's back and side is going to fold down over Primal. Let's give that a try. And in doing so, is automatically going to hinge down his tail and head over to the sides of Primal. Look at this. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. Whoa. Oh, ow. Whoa. Watch out for that spring feedback, though. Step four, we're going to position the legs again. And in five, we are going to remove that headpiece again. And tailpiece and then place the gator head onto the side of Primal's arm and the tail as a weapon. And you now should have him ready to go for battle. So I'll admit, I seriously got these as a joke. I thought, okay, what are the silly basic Transformers going to be doing this time? There's always some sort of silly gimmick going on with them, but I'll admit, this is actually pretty awesome. It transformed so quickly and so easily. I think we can rotate this up, by the way. Yeah, we can, it's kind of like a little side cannon. It's so basic yet fluid, it has a ton of play value to it. I think I still need to adjust these arms too. There's a little bit of adjustment here trying to figure out what best looks good. It turns out though, all around, this is a really fun gimmick and makes for a really fun playable action toy. The armored up Primal looks great. Not sure how this will peg into the movie, but I really enjoyed this one so far. As we move through the others, we'll check back to see if the armor switches out. I know we've had some questions on that. We've also had some questions on what the heck is this? Well, this is my new stupid passion project, trying to collect many of the mini little tykes. Flashback minis. What? The things I find while walking around. And what sort of classic did we find? We found the classic basketball ball and hoop. And other things? Did we find the classic cart? Okay, there's our little tyke's car. A tiny hoop set. That's just really weird use of packaging. Oh, Steve, watch out for the ball. All right, who to check on next? How about RC and Silver Fang? Silver Wolf, Silver Bolt, Silver Fang, Silver Fang and RC. RC, a character for some reason, I do not have very many at all of her. Maybe just one RC. What do we got for RC? Okay, there we go. A something something series of RC we checked out, oh, about a year or two ago now. But anyhow, here's RC and Silver Fang. How are they gonna look combined together? Oh, that's pretty interesting. RC in bike mode this time. I kind of prefer a cool Cybertronian car. But that's obviously not gonna fly in disguise on Earth, so a bike is gonna do. RC with 13 steps of transformation. We'll even use my pink scissors for this one. And RC, Silver Fang, out of pack, if you can see Silver Fang there, kind of blending into the table. 
RC with massive wheel legs, but that's pretty nice because she can stand on them pretty easily. And of course, roll about to the mall. Bright, bright red, pretty good figure. And the Silver Fang Beast here, pretty bulky, pretty strong. I like the strongness of these beast toys. I don't mind that they don't transform into robots. I think that's fine that they're just armor mint. It's got a good body style to it, a really pretty wolf. A very light arctic blue with some silver paint going through. Very sharp, I like this wolf quite a bit. Every once in a while I find a toy like this and I think, wow, whoa. Okay, so let's first check out RC's transformation into bike. A little more complicated, obviously, than Primal because Primal is just basically going into one body to another body. And I'm so unpracticed in transforming bikes, it can go wrong so fast. Alright, step one and two, we're going to rotate her head and flip it back down. At least we start easy. Stage two, we're going to rotate her so we can see her back section and make sure her wheels now are going in this direction. Paying really close attention to the wheels pointing that way. As again, you get these twisted around wrong, it's not gonna happen. We're gonna then kick out this leg and rotate, and we're gonna pin in her knee into her thigh. Then we're gonna rotate her back around to her front, and we're gonna rotate this wheel so that it is pointing out. Now this is the wheel that does move, so that kind of helps you go, okay, I'm in the right position. Then in step eight, kind of bring her wheel legs together like so. Step nine, we're going to start swinging back her shoulders. And this part, if you do right, should lock in to these little pegs on the back of this footwheel, creating kind of the bike seat and the back of the bike. So if you get that going right, it should be nice and tight. And I think we did. And that would be step 10. Step 11 now, we're going to bring around this other leg, rotating the front wheel out the only thing I don't like about this one is that her hands are kind of tucked in a little bit on the back part of this leg and it doesn't really fit in very well. It just kind of rests there. And I think that is our bike transformation. And she stands. So definitely basic and tricky on this one. Primal was a lot more fun going from monkey to robot. This bike is a little bit tippy. A little bit not the best place together, but it works okay as a bike. And there goes Steve Irwin. So I'm not super satisfied with her bike. It's okay to get her back, just kind of pull her arms back and around and see if you can get her back to where she was. I'm hoping Studio Series RC will be a little more fun, and we'll try to check out several of the Studio Series once they become more easily available. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's drop a wolf on her head. Ow. So just like Primal and Skull Cruncher, there's holes on the top of her torso, and then there's posts on the beast, and we can place down tightly onto her shoulders. That in itself is a powerful combination. For three, we're gonna rotate legs around. I think they just swing up and around over. That's real easy to find. And in fact, that is more seamless than what we saw with what? And in fact, that is more seamless than what we saw with the Skull Cruncher's legs. Those legs are always just flailing. Stage four will lift up the back of the wolf and side and flip down over RC's chest, activating the spring side mechanisms and revealing our new combo beast face. That's a pretty cool beast robot mask. Let's see, now the wolf head piece should detach and can be placed over onto this side to balance out and then add the sword over onto this side. This piece also can rotate out, it's a small cannon-like thing. So just like Primal and Skull Cruncher, I'm pleasantly impressed. This is a fun Beast Alliance combo. A good color scheme too with the arctic blue on top of the bright red. Pretty good, except for maybe RC's open back plate. And one more Beast Alliance pack today. We've got Bumblebee and Snarl Saber. <laughs> Gotta have Bumblebee included. There on the back, Bumblebee has got his classic Camaro going again. And more importantly, an easy seven steps of transformation. Interesting, this one has a shiny QR code. The others did not have that. So let's get these two out of pack. Bumblebee out, Snarl Saber out. Pretty nice little basic bumblebee here. 
bright yellow with some silver blue windshields. Arms are pretty straightforward. Classic Camaro look, always a fun one. Even with that classic Bumblebee movie face, feels so nostalgic already. Snarls, they were pretty large. These are all pretty large for the Beast Alliance combos. Nice looking black kitty cat. Feels like it's going to do some pretty cool things. Articulation on Bumblebee, shoulder rotation. Those arms are so basic though. Head going to be lobbed in tight. Nothing in the waist, but we do kick out with knees and hips and all the fun parts there. So plenty enough to give you some robot mobility. I don't think we talked much about RC's articulation back there, but pretty much the same things with these. Shoulders, hips, knees, pretty good feet stability. And then Snarl Saber's got, you know, good pivot points at the elbows, back hips, back knees, just enough to give that a good go to. So I'm guessing Bumblebee's quick seven points are gonna be really easy and fun. First thing we need to do is swing on his back hood and roof down. We're then going to want to pinch his legs together, rotate up these little feet prints. Then step five, we're gonna swing around this whole back section. Oh, that's so fluid and easy. And in six and seven, rotate this front bumper around top and then his arms in. That was a good one. It's so quick and easy and still solid, making for a lot of quick fun play. I see several ports there to place in weapons too if needed. That's a really solid fun play design. Okay, Bumblebee, get standing back up so we can test out your Beast Alliance. You can always tell you have a good solid transformer if you can do a quick stop motion with them. Okay, Snarl Saber onto the back. First thing, usually you remove the tail pieces. They slide right out. And then we'll drop a Snarl Saber on top of Bumblebee's head. A little bit tighter on this one. I appreciate though the thick posting. Then rotate flip these legs in again, very similar to Wolf Fang there where they just seamlessly fold up into themselves. And now step four, our favorite part, rotating the back down. And we have our Beast Alliance forming. The head shield usually opposite to where his head used to be and same thing with the blade. I'm having a little issue with the springiness of Snarl Saber's back and we have our Beast Alliance combo. It's like an animal trap, it could spring at any moment. Well, it's certainly a very pretty looking combo. The yellow, the dark Snarl Saber, huh? very nicely done. I love the oversized bumblebee head there. That's pretty nice looking. Kind of reminiscent of the old beast masks from Beast Wars. Now, a few people had asked early on, do these switch out with each other? And I think they should. So let's give a quick switch out. We'll pop off Snarl Saber here and we'll try to match up with Skull Cruncher. Do the holes and post match? That they do. So now we have Bumblebee Beast Alliance with Skull Cruncher. And we'll test out Silver Fang here with Primal. That's a good combo. You may have to switch and move the masks just to get them right. And a drop down Snarl's neighbor. I can never say that one right. Onto RC. So that just enhances these a whole bunch to be able to mix and match the armaments of the Beast Alliance figures. So pretty solid series with these. I'm overly impressed. They're fun. The gimmick is cool. You get two awesome robots per pack. The beasts are quickly transformable back into themselves. That is if you can find their heads. And of course, just like classic Beast Wars, free rides for everyone. And that's Transformers Rise of the Beasts Beasts Alliance combo team figures. What do you think? Pretty good start for Rise of the Beasts. If you like today's video, please give us a squake, a squirrelibe, squamet, your favorite Rise of the Beasts upcoming character. We'll be checking out a lot more, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. That's what I have to say about that. I had to help her. I just had to help her. They look so yummy. Well, now Ginger has moved on to Snarl Staber. Those are delicious, she says. Ah, oh, she wants to share with the silver fang. Oh, no, no, she just wants to jam that into her mouth. That's, That's me. me.